Yesterday we left off on great faith, authority, and persistence, and we were on page 18, where we have the picture of um, Christ seated in heavenly places above all things. But before we get started back on that, so everybody got a homework assignment last night. Remember what that was? Did, so did y'all do that? Did you uh, make a list of some problems you're having, get some scriptures, and then pray with your family in authority, commanding those situations to change? Did you guys do that? Any testimonies to share? Not yet? Maybe tomorrow? Okay. Okay, well, let's just recap what we were talking about yesterday. So we, we looked at, there are many, many scriptures that say that God has given us authority. You know, we looked at James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee. Psalm 91 says that you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. Romans 16, 20 says you put your foot on the devil and God will crush him under your foot. Okay, we have scriptures like Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We have Matthew 16, 18, and 19 saying that God has given us, Jesus gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and we will bind up the enemy, and we will let loose those who have been bound by the enemy. Okay, those keys are authority. Then we looked at uh, John 14, 12, where Jesus said, Everything that I have done, you will do also, and greater things than these we, he will do. We will do. Amen? And we know that Jesus was going around destroying the works of the devil. And so that means we are commissioned to go around destroying the works of the devil. And in that assignment, your assignment comes with everything you need to fulfill it. You know, Jesus said in Mark 16, believers will cast out demons in his name. He said believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Okay, well, in that assignment, there's a, an authority that is given to us to carry that out. Amen? So he has fully equipped us to do the works that he wants us to do. And so now what we need to do is we need to recognize that he has given us authority. We also need to recognize that he has seated us in a place of authority. Amen? So we saw that um, we were redeemed out of the kingdom of darkness, and that now we are in Christ and we're seated in heavenly places. We saw that, that Christ, Jesus the head, and the church the body, all of Christ, is above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named. Okay, so we're above every name that is named. It's not just Jesus who's above everything. We are in Christ with him. Jesus is the head of Christ. We are the body of Christ. The entire Christ is seated in heavenly places. So the entire Christ is in a position of authority above all things. Okay, so let's just look at this picture again. So this picture is here to give you an idea of different things that you have authority over. Okay, so we have authority over things like addiction, depression. We have authority over prostitution, over weather, over sickness, over the devil himself, over his demons. We have authority over poverty, over chaos, over smoke shops or houses of addiction, spirits of fear, psychics or evil spirits or witches. Stress. So anything that has a name, you have authority over it. Anything you have authority over, you talk to and you tell it what to do in the name of Jesus, and it shall obey your command. Amen? Amen. Okay. So I, I've heard that um, that there's a prevalence of witchcraft in Ghana. I know there's the same uh, in Kenya, in Uganda, other places that I've been to. A witch is lesser than Satan, right? A witch is lesser than Satan. You know, which is lesser than even a demon. We have authority over demons. Why would we ever be afraid of a witch? We should, we should not be afraid of a witch. We should not be afraid. If Satan walks in this door, he's the one who's trembling if we know who we are. Because we ruin his day. Because we exert our God-given authority over the devil and we destroy his works. If we destroy the works of the devil, we destroy the works of the demon, we destroy the works of the witch. Amen? We're not to be afraid of Satan whatsoever or anything in his kingdom. What can a witch do to me? Nothing. Unless you think she can. Or he. I think that I am redeemed from the authority of darkness and nothing shall by any means harm me. Jesus says so. He said, you shall trample upon serpents and scorpions and witches and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
We need to believe that last part of the, ver of the verse. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Period. End of story. So don't be, don't be worried about witches. Just command the evil spirit that's within them to command it to go in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Okay, another thing that I heard is that, that some people are praying for witches to die. Okay, now who has the power of death? What is the scripture? We, we read it yesterday. Who has the power of death? Jesus came to destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil. The power of death is not from our Father. It says death, uh, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So if we're praying for somebody to die, we're praying for the will of Satan to be done. So we are never, ever to pray for somebody to die. Even an evil person. We're to cast the evil spirit out of the person and then they're transformed. Right? That's what we're to do. We cast the devil out of the person and then they will be transformed. Think about Legion. Remember Legion? He had thousands of demons were, were within him. He had superhuman strength. He would break the shackles. He was exceedingly violent and no one could tame him. He was um, out of his mind. He was running around naked. He was living in the tombs. He was crying out, attacking people. He was completely just wild, evil. Okay? More evil than a witch. I mean, he's got thousands of demons inside of him. Uh, that's why they called him Legion. I think a Legion is 2,000. Can you imagine 2,000 demons in somebody? Okay, well, what happened? As soon as Jesus cast the demons out, he was a brand new person. He was sitting, clothed, and in his right mind, and he wanted to follow Jesus. Amen? So the solution is never to pray for death. That's the will of the, that's the, will of the enemy to kill. The solution is get the devil out of the person, and then you have a lovable, wonderful person. Amen? All right. So let me just give some more testimonies about authority. So um, there was a gentleman named Bill, and he was in Alcoholics Anonymous with me. And he was a little bit older than me. I think he was in his 50s. And well, I'll catch it up quickly. I'll be 50 in March. So, so anyway, so Bill, he was having many years of addiction to alcohol. And he just couldn't be cured of it. And all we did, it's, it's just authority. All we did, he wanted to be free. Okay, so he wanted to be free. That's why he was at the AA meeting. And all we did is we went to the parking lot, and I just held his hand. And I told him that Jesus took stripes on his back for him to be healed. And I said, Jesus gave us authority over the devil and over all of his works. And I just held his hand. And I said, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you and your addiction to alcohol, I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Do not return. In the name of Jesus, broken heart and broken soul, be healed. Be filled with joy, love, and peace from God. And sound mind of the Holy Spirit be upon this man. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's simple. And from that, that was like, I don't know, four or five years ago. He's been sober ever since. Just from one little prayer. Just one little prayer. He wanted to be free from that addiction. And so in the name of Jesus, he was set free. Remember in Luke 4, 18, Jesus said he came to set the captives free. came to set the people free from oppression. So addiction is captivity. Um, addiction is oppression. Cancer is captivity. Cancer is oppression. Any problem you're facing in life will fit into the category of Luke 4, 18 of what Jesus came to do. Well, Jesus only started the work of being a son of God. Jesus was the first son of God. He was the first of many brothers. We are brothers of Jesus with the same spirit, the same power, and we just need to continue the works that he was doing, setting free all the people who are around us. Amen? Okay, sometimes um, you can even set people free who don't want to be set free. There was a young man who was addicted to heroin, and and he didn't necessarily want to change. Okay, but the thing is, I have authority over the devil no matter no matter what. It doesn't matter if the devil's in, in me or in you or in this person over there. It doesn't matter. I, I am above the devil. I have authority over the devil. You have authority over the devil. So whether or not this person wants to be in addiction, take your authority over the devil that's within them and cast him out. Amen? Okay, so uh, me and this young man's mother, we prayed for him. He was him and his girlfriend were addicted to heroin. 
We prayed for him, uh, commanding the addiction to leave, and then he'd be better. But he still has a will, right? Well, in his case, his will was, I still want to play. I still want to party. So he'd go back into it, and then we set him free again. He'd go back into it, we set him free again. And finally, he had changed his mind, and he stayed out of it. Amen? But you can kick the addiction out. You can kick the demon out of the person. And then they will have a moment of clarity, and they, they can decide, do I want to enter back into sin, or do I want to be free? Amen? Amen. You have authority over the devil. Okay, um, not too far from my house, there was a, what they call a gentleman's club, which is a, a strip a strip bar, where the ladies strip, you know, the men go get drunk, and they give their money, and, and they do all this stuff. Okay, well, we exerted our authority, and every time we drive past that place, it's called the Gold Cup. In the name of Jesus, I close the doors of Gold Cup. In the name of Jesus, I close you down, I shut you down. And we just did that. Every time we drive by, we just speak against it. And lo and behold, the building is demolished now. Amen? Amen. Okay, let me tell you an example. There was a, a typhoon coming upon the Philippines. And I have a few friends in the Philippines. Um, I just know them by email. I've never met them. But I have a few friends in the Philippines, and they said, Bobby, this terrible, it's a super typhoon. A super typhoon has... Wind speed of 200 miles per hour. That's like a, a tornado. I mean, that's like, that's just crazy. I mean, that's devastating. So this 200 mile per hour super typhoon is coming up on the Philippines. And then we exerted our authority against it, commanded it that it shall not steal, kill, and destroy. We commanded it to disintegrate. And what happened is it did not disintegrate, but it, it went over the Philippines and it barely did anything, which is an impossibility because that 200 mile per hour wind. And then we kept speaking our faith against it. We kept speaking in authority. And then right when it got to China, we, we prayed again, and it just disintegrated into scattered clouds. Amen? Okay, so God has given us authority over the weather. Now, we may not have perfect results, right? But we, we just need to keep trying. We need to keep keep exerting our authority. We get stronger. We get stronger. Amen? Okay, uh, another example of authority. There was a gentleman who recently had leukemia. Leukemia is a cancer that destroys the bone marrow. And when the bone marrow is destroyed, your production of blood is, is destroyed, and you just wither away and die, and it's painful, and you have lots of problems. Well, he was given a death sentence by the doctor. He had been hospitalized for some amount of time, and things were not looking good for him. He had even uh, he had kind of turned away from God in, in recent times, and all we did is, you know, I just asked him if I could pray for him. Um, then we went over just a couple of scriptures. You know, when somebody doesn't feel too good, you, maybe they're not ready for like a, a sermon, right? But just talk about a few things. You know, Jesus, he bore your sicknesses. He carried your pains. He took stripes on, your back, on his back to pay for your healing, the same as he died on the cross. Amen? And he told us he gave us authority over the devil. He told us we can pray in agreement. He told us that we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And so you just give them a little bit to cling on to and then pray for them. Okay, so we prayed and then he felt better. And, and the way I like to do it is I'll pray for somebody and I want to get an update in maybe two days. You know, unless they're about to die, then maybe quicker than that, right? But it's good to pray, wait about two days, get an update, what's changed, how's it coming along. And then if you need to add more spit and mud, then you add more spit and mud. You know, Jesus did that. Remember with the blind man? Remember that? Where he, he ministered healing to the blind man, and he said, how, how is your vision? And the man said, I see like men as trees walking. And then Jesus made more spit and more mud and put it on his eyes, and then, boom, he saw perfectly. Okay, so even Jesus, he didn't get 100% the first time he ministered. That's Jesus. If Jesus didn't get 100% healing the first time he ministered, then there will also be many times when we minister healing to somebody and it's going to take multiple times to get the desired result you just don't quit we have a promise of god you lay your hands upon the sick they will promise they will recover okay so in this gentleman with leukemia we we prayed another two times and every time it's better then finally he said you know i'm feeling i'm feeling really good but the doctor said my blood count is too low if it gets to here then i can go home I'm like, okay, here we go. In the name of Jesus, blood counts. I command you 
Raise up right now and be released from the hospital, for you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. And then the next update I got from him, he's like the, his uh, blood counts tripled. And the doctors were amazed, and they sent him home, healed by the stripes of Jesus. Healed from leukemia. He had a death sentence. Amen? This was right at Christmas time. And have you ever noticed, it's no coincidence, around Christmas time, people start getting sick and people start dying. That's because Satan's trying to destroy our time of Christ. Have you noticed that? But he's not going to do that to us. Amen? We're, I say in the name of Jesus, we are going to rise right now. We are arising in our understanding and our operation of authority. I declare in the name of Jesus that every one of you, you shall lay your hands upon the sick and they will recover. I declare in the name of Jesus that Jesus has given you authority to heal every sickness. Jesus has given you authority to heal every disease. Jesus has given you authority to cast out every unclean spirit. It shall be done in every one of us. It shall be done in abundance. And so be it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me give you an example as close to which as we have back in the U.S. Okay, we have these psychic shops. And these psychic shops, like they're fortune tellers, they read your palm, you know, different things like that. And so there's these stupid little psychic shops everywhere. And you could probably say that's a form of witchcraft. And uh, there was one on my way to work. And so, like, if you, if you think about your day, every day when you're commuting, like I'm going from here to church or here to work, there are, between here and there, there are various ungodly things, right? There could be a house of prostitution. There could be a psychic shop over there. There could be a bar over here. And so on your commute every day, there are various ungodly things on the road, right? Well, make a habit when every time you drive past that thing, just speak against it. In the name of Jesus, psychic shop. I close your doors in the name of Jesus. And so every day I drive to work, I speak against that psychic shop. Psychic shop closed down in the name of Jesus. Amen? And so do the same thing. Use your authority every day. Speak against the ungodly things that you see. You know, sickness in a person is ungodly. Sickness is a presence of Satan trying to kill somebody. Sickness is a murderer. Sickness is a thief. It is a destroyer. It is of the devil. It is an enemy. Okay, so if somebody is sick, who's at, at home, at work, wherever you are, if somebody's sick, the devil is oppressing them, and you have the power and you have the authority to set them free. Amen? Okay, let's look at the section, Great Faith Being Persistent. So, remember we said there were only two people in the gospel, only two people that Jesus said had great faith. It was the, the centurion who understood authority, and it was the persistent and insistent mother. If we read Matthew 15, And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, O son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Amen? Okay, so... So this is an example of somebody being persistent and insistent to get the job done. So if you have a loved one or a friend or a stranger, somebody that you're ministering to, be persistent until it is done. Like the, the man with leukemia, if I had prayed one time and just never followed up with him, he'd still be sick. But just follow up. Follow up every couple of days. Follow up. How are you? Follow up. Even when they're perfectly well, follow up again because sometimes Satan will come and reafflict. Remember, Jesus said that the sower sows the seed and that the, the fowls of the air will come and pick the seed off the ground. And then he said, What that means is Satan comes and tries to steal the word. Well, he'll try and come and steal what you've done for somebody. So you, you've, you've healed somebody, you've helped somebody. 
and then he may wait a couple days when you have left the picture and then come up with them again. So it's good to follow up with your person after they even say they're healed completely, follow up with them in you know, two days, a week, something like that, and just check on them. And if Satan's attacked them again, set them free. But see, this is where it's important when you set somebody free, you also you want to disciple them so that they can have faith, so that they can be untouchable, unkillable, unharmable, no evil befallable, nothing shall any means harm you of right? So we need to get them believing that so they can walk in faith, in protection, okay? So follow up with your person after you, you minister to them, and then seek to disciple them. And especially, you know, the most important thing of all is if we lay hold of protection, then we're not going to have harms happening to us. So protection is of the utmost importance for us to learn. And if you want protection, study Psalm 91. Continuously read it, believe it, confess it. Read it, believe it, confess it. Psalm 91 is all about physical protection in this present life. Amen? Amen. I love Psalm 91. Okay, we look at... Well, first of all, let's consider that... Remember we said that in 2 Corinthians 1.20... There's a scripture that says, every promise of God, the answer is yes and amen. Okay, so that means the answer, you know, we have a promise of God that when we lay our hands on the sick, they will recover. So the answer to that, to your ministering to them, is yes. So we just need to make sure that we don't quit before we get the promise. We don't quit. I'm not saying that every time, there's many times you pray one time and it's finished. Thank God, right? But then there's other times where you, it takes extreme persistence. But let's be persistent until the job is done. In Luke 18, 1 to 5, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Saying, there was a there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city. And she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Okay, so this is an example. Jesus is teaching us we need to be persistent. We need to be persistent. We need to be insistent. Okay, so he said men always ought to pray and not lose heart. So we need to always be praying and not losing heart. Okay, and we'll, I'm going to show you a picture in a minute, and we'll understand that a little bit more. But in this example, there's an ungodly judge, an evil judge. He's evil. He doesn't regard man. He doesn't regard God. Who does that sound like? It's the devil. Doesn't regard man. Doesn't regard God. It's the devil, this unjust judge. This unjust judge, though he doesn't care for God, though he does not care for the widow, this widow's persistence was driving him crazy. And so he relented through her persistence. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. You can weary the devil. <laughs> Amen? He needs to be weary. He needs to be subdued. We are commissioned to subdue the earth. We are commissioned to set creation free from the bondage of corruption. We are commissioned to... To continue the works that Jesus began, destroying the works of the devil. Amen? And so we will be as persistent as necessary to, to make it be done. Amen? Amen? Okay, like if you had a child, and your child's being disobedient, you don't just tell them one time, stop doing this, and if they keep doing it, you're never going to say anything to them again? No, you're going to keep coming against them until they stop the behavior. Okay, that's your child. If you may tell your child who loves you multiple times, stop doing this. Don't do that anymore. Don't do that. You know, if you have to, to work with your child multiple times, your child who loves you, don't you think a devil who doesn't like you, you, you may have to be more persistent with at times? Amen? Okay, so let's, let's look at the next section. Pray as many times as necessary. So we need to pray as many times as necessary to get the job done. Sometimes we pray once and it's finished, and thank God for that, and other times it may require 10 or 20 or even more times. But the key thing is don't quit because all the promises of God are yes in Christ. 
And that's 2 Corinthians 1.20. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. And again, remember, anywhere you see a will or a shall, believers lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That is a promise. You need to know the promise, you need to believe the promise, and you need to minister until the promise is fully fulfilled. So let's just look at this little picture on the right. So this picture is like you have a scale. So 0% healthy to 100% healthy. 0% healthy, you're dead, right? The person's dead. Now let's just say that the person is at that line that says before prayer. Okay, well, we pray for the person. Let's just say it's this man that, who had leukemia. We pray for the person, and maybe you can't see anything yet. Okay? We, what we want to make sure we don't say is, man, it's not working. It's not working. I don't see anything. It's not working. It, it just didn't work. I don't know. I don't understand why it didn't work. Don't say that. Don't say that. What you want to do is you want to have the mindset like Jesus had. I, I prayed once. I got to hear. I prayed again. I got to hear. I prayed another time. I got to hear. I can see it now. I prayed that one last time. Boom. Completely done. Amen. So you want to have the mindset, I pray, and then I'm adding to, and then I'm adding to. Amen? You don't want to pray, and if you don't see anything, say, it's not working, because then you just negated your faith. You just canceled everything you did. So sometimes, many times, you're going to pray once, it will be completely done. But many other times, it will not be completely done. And therefore, keep this picture in your mind. I, they were at the line before prayer. Then I prayed, and I got them to hear. I still can't see it. I pray again, I got them to hear. I still cannot see it, but it's working. I pray a third time, I still can't see it. Man, I wish I could see it. Just don't back down. You pray the fourth time, and all of a sudden, it's delightful. Yes, it's been working all this time. Finally, I can see it. So a person may need to be 80% healed before you can visibly see it. And if you stop when they're 70%, you never see you never got to see it and they never got healed so just keep this picture in mind every time you pray you're building upon jesus prayed once the man could see a little bit he, he prayed a second time and he could see perfectly that was jesus the perfect son of god the man who had perfect faith if jesus had to minister two times then you might have to minister 20 times right I mean, he was perfect. Now, we're catching up to him. He said we would do the same works and greater. And so we want to set our eyes on getting to the bar that Jesus set. Amen? His, he wants us to surpass him. we got to catch up to him, and then we're past him. <laughs> Amen? Okay, let's just read this point number three. It's real important. If you don't see results from prayer, never say it isn't working. Never. Instead, you need to have the mindset that you are adding to and building upon what you've already prayed. You are not starting over when you pray again. You are building upon your previous prayers. And this is super important. Okay, let's just read about Jesus. Mark 8, 22. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Amen? Okay, so let me give some examples. Of what is that? And let me give some examples of this. So um, there was a lady named Maya, and Maya, she worked at the grocery store, and she was the person that you come in the store and she would just say hello to you, so she was a greeter. And she always had this walker. She's always on the walker, and I asked her, I said, what's the matter? She said, I have multiple sclerosis, and multiple sclerosis, it destroys the nerves in the brain, so the brain can't communicate to the muscles, so the, mus the, the limbs get hard to move, they get sluggish, and eventually they're, they're more or less paralyzed, right? So that's, what, that's how MS works. It destroys the nerves so that you can't communicate. And I said, well, can we pray? And so she said, yes. And so I, I prayed for her. In the name of Jesus, MS, I command you to leave her body in Jesus' name. 
I command every nerve to be healed. I command all the muscles to receive their strength and their movement, and so be it in the name of Jesus. And so I did that over a couple of months. Like every time I would come in, I, I would I'd see her at the door, I'd pray for her. And, and then one day, you couldn't see any difference. Like two months later, you couldn't see anything. She's still on the walker. She's like, Bobby, I went to the doctor, and, and he did a new MRI. An MRI is just an imaging test where you can see the damage. And he said that all, all the lesions in the brain are gone. He said there's only some that are in the spine. So you see, you can't see that with your eyes. But the MRI, you could see that her brain was healed, and it was only in the spine there was still some damage to some nerves. So you couldn't see anything yet. She's still in her water. She's still complaining. She still looks the same. But miraculous healing had been taking place in the brain, and it only needed to continue to occur in the spine. But you couldn't see it. So you don't quit. Amen? Okay, then my mom. My mom, she... When this happened, she's probably about 70 years old. She was a smoker for all her life, like 50 years a smoker. And you know that destroys your lungs. And what happened was she was visiting my sister, and she fell and she broke her hip. And so she was hospitalized, and the doctors, their, their biggest concern was not her hip. Their biggest concern was that her lungs were messed up. And they gave her like two or three different diagnoses. They told her she would be on oxygen for the rest of her life. And, and on and on. So they were just giving all this bad news. And so anyway, so I went up there to go visit. And my mom, she was not a woman of faith. And she would tell me that I was superstitious, that she didn't believe in healing, she didn't believe in all these things. So she was not, she's not somebody who's kind of coming to agreement with you. So I only laid hands on her once because I didn't want to hear whatever she was going to say. Because, you know, some people will talk you out of faith. Or some people will say, say the wrong things and you don't even want them to be healed, you know, which is bad, right? But because some people, they just they come against your beliefs, you know, or they come against Jesus or they say Jesus is superstitious or whatever. You don't want to hear that stuff. So I only laid hands on her once. But instead, what my dad and I did is twice a day, me and my dad, we, we would go to the car in the parking lot. My dad, I'd hold his hand and we would pray in agreement. In the name of Jesus, I come in all this sickness and the lungs you leave and you leave now. In the name of Jesus, lungs, I command you to be healed and breathe freely and clearly. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you will not be on oxygen all the rest of your life, and you shall be free. So we did that morning and night, morning and night, for five days. Okay, and then I went back home to Houston where I live. And then, sure enough, my mom, her lungs were completely healed from 50 years of smoking. She's not on oxygen. She doesn't smoke anymore. Her lungs are healed and whole by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So it was just, that's just a little bit of persistence. You know, that was praying two times a day for five days. That, that's, not, that's not hard, right? We can do that. Okay, so we're, we're going to look at the same passages we looked at before, just as a reminder. This is a big change for many people. We're so used to praying... Father, please do this. Father, please do that. Father, please do this. Okay, so your conversation with God is going to be thank you for your goodwill. Your conversation with Jesus is going to be thank you, Jesus, that you suffered stripes so this person can be healed. Your conversation with God is thank you. It's not please do this. Your conversation about solving the problem is with the problem. Mark 11, 22 to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Amen. Okay, so we all believe in Jesus. Raise your hand if you believe in Jesus. Okay, so we have faith in God. Are you a whoever? Are you a anybody? Amen. This is not about pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, apostles, super disciples. It's anyone. Anyone who has faith in God. Anyone. Everything Jesus did is about the believer. It's not about special people. Okay, there are no special people. There's believers. 
and there's and there's people that are sent to help raise up people. There's people who are sent to go evangelize. So we all have different things that we may specialize in, and that's good, right? Because we need different body parts. We need different functions to be done. Okay, but at the end of the day, any believer can do the things that Jesus did. And so our mission is to be believing. Jesus said, remember the disciples that said, what, what, what must we do to work the works of God? And what did Jesus say? Believe on him whom he has sent. So our work is to believe. We have to work to believe. So we'll, we'll have to have another lesson the next time I come. We need to talk about some things we can do to strengthen our believing. You know, testimonies are like at the top of the list. You know, good Bible study from a from a teacher who produces fruit. Okay, that's one. Reading of the New Testament, that's two. Hearkening to Jesus and the Gospels, three. Testimonies, four. Putting into practice, getting victories to grow upon, five. And so there's there's things we can do to increase our believing. Okay, not only are there those things. There are things we need to cut out of our life to increase our believing. Listening to people who preach misunderstanding. Wrong preaching is, is deadly. <laughs> Wrong preaching will get you disbelieving in these things. Wrong preaching will tell you healing passed away with the apostles. Are you crazy? No, we did not. Wrong I mean, that stuff is prevalent in many places. There's, so there's an abundance of wrong, wrong teaching. Wrong teaching will ruin your beliefs. So you need to make sure that whoever you're listening to, they must have miracles, they must have healings, they must have signs following them. Otherwise, if they don't have signs following them, how do you know they believe? Jesus said signs will follow those who believe. If there's no signs following, don't listen to them. Jesus said, if I don't do the works of my Father, don't believe me. Right? That's what Jesus said. If Jesus, the best preacher who ever lived, needed signs to prove what he was saying was true, then so much more we who are lesser preachers, teachers, we need signs for, for them to believe the, the same word that we're teaching, right? Remember Paul said, you know, that he was talking about these guys that they're puffed up with the things they were saying. He said, but I'm going to come and see what power you're producing. You know, anyway, we'll get to that in the lesson on the Holy Spirit, but he has given us the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit, we are to witness to people. And witnessing doesn't mean speaking a bunch of words. That's part of witnessing. But witnessing is producing evidence. Reducing the power of God to help people. That's what a witness does. Okay, we looked at the example of... Oh, let me finish on this. So on verse 24, it's an important thing. Okay, he says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe. So when we pray, we need to believe. And one of the things that's really good to do, like let's just say you're going to go to the hospital. Um, somebody's called you to go pray for somebody. Before you go, take a minute and watch some testimony videos. You know, watch, watch a couple testimonies. Then you're going to see ordinary people like us having a healing victory. There's people like us. And, and I have some videos, so... Um, you know, I have a few USB drives with some things on it, and I can give it to some of you, and y'all can share those, right? You can have teaching, and you can have testimonies. But before you go to the hospital, watch a couple of healing testimonies. Then you're going to be pumped up. You're going to be believing. If it happened for this guy, it'll happen for me too. Let me go pray for this sick person. Okay? Because you're, when you have that testimony right immediately before prayer, you're much more likely to be believing because you just saw an example. Amen? Amen. There's just simple things you can do that will be helpful. Okay, and we saw that ministering should be simple. It's not a 10 or 20 minute prayer. It's like one, two minutes. You know, Jesus was even less than that. He was just like one little sentence. Okay, so I still have some trimming of words today. But Jesus just said, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. And came out and the boy was healed. Amen. Then we saw Paul doing it. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Okay, so it's just command. Command the evil to leave, the sickness, the problem, the devil, whatever. Command the solution to come. Command, command. Okay, the simple instructions, again, number one, believe in God and his promises. Number two, do not beg and plead with God to solve your problem. He said talk directly to your problem. Number three, boldly 
and authoritatively command the problem to go in Jesus' name. And then number four, boldly command the solution to come in the name of Jesus. You know, so cancer, I command you, leave the liver right now. In the name of Jesus, liver be healed. Liver, I command you to function properly. So be it in the name of Jesus. And I declare that by the stripes of Jesus, liver, you are healed. Amen? Just command. Check up on them in two days. Okay, number five. Be as persistent as necessary and keep this picture in your mind. Okay, that, that picture is very important. It's just a simple thing. Every time you pray, you're at it too. The greater your faith, the bigger the step you'll have. The, the greater the faith, the more power of God will flow. Okay? So just be persistent. It'll be done. You have a promise. Amen? So, do you guys understand authority? Yes. Are you going to put it into practice? Yes. Every day? Yes. That wasn't very many people. Are you all going to put it into practice every day? Yes. Amen. Are you going to heal the sick? Yes. Are you going to raise the dead? Yes. Are you going to cast out demons? Yes. Are you going to shut down witchcraft and psychics? Yes. Are you going to close the bar in the name of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Okay, so test questions and homework. So, and you, you think about these things on your own time. Number one, what does it mean that God has given you authority? What will you do with it? How does this change your approach to problems in life? And think about historical problems that you had and how you could use authority to resolve those problems. Amen? Number two, how does authority work? Describe authority to a friend or family member using a normal life example, perhaps like a police officer versus a criminal, right? Uh, maybe a spiritual example, Jesus versus a demon. You know, just think of some way to relay the concept of authority to some people in your life. You know, teach them this. This is very simple. Authority is very simple. Okay? And then teach them how do you pray with authority. Command, command, command. That's how authority works. You command in the name of Jesus. Okay, number three. God promised that the answer to all prayers according to his will and according to his promises, the answer is yes. What does it mean and what will you do if you pray and you don't see a result? Does it mean your prayer didn't work? Or does it mean you need to be persistent? Okay. Number four. Make a list of three to five problems in your life right now Identify, excuse me, identify the enemy in the situation, find some scriptures that reveal the will of God in those situations, and then pray with authority for all those situations and prepare for victory and share your testimonies. So that's the same homework assignment from yesterday. Okay, number five, do the same thing with your friends. Find out what their, their problems are, find scriptures related to their problems so that you know what God's will is in those situations, and then speak your authority, commanding the devil to get out of those situations, and commanding the situations to change, to transform, to line up with the scriptures, the good will of God. Amen? Okay, and then number six, if you go to these websites, who has internet? Raise your hand if you have internet. Okay, so those of you with access to the internet, there are three links here, and there's healing testimonies. There's like 25 videos, healing testimonies. That there are Andrew Womack. Okay, I watch watch those continuously. Watch one every day. You know, watch one or two before you go pray for somebody. Okay, there are financial testimonies there. At the second link, there's financial testimonies. There's um, what he calls destiny stories, where people's lives were turned around. So this is a good place to go. There's probably 40 different testimony videos, and there may be 10 minutes each. So just be watching something every day, and this is going to strengthen everything you've heard, and everything you're going to hear this week, you'll be strengthened by the testimonies. Okay? All right? Any questions about authority? Okay, we're going to go into healing, so I just need a minute to pull that one up. Yes. Thank you, Lord of the 
I want to ask, at what state or what point do we exercise the authority? Is it the one on whom to exercise it? Is it when he decides it, asks for it, requests for it, before we exercise the authority? Or just at seeing it, see that the person needs healing, a deliverance, freedom, that you think you have authority to find. So you just start buying it. Okay, that's a good question. So the answer is at all times. Okay. So the person who's seeking your help, the good thing about that is that their will, their will is they want to be free. So that's a helpful thing. A person whose will is that they want to be free, then they're more likely not to enter into a bad thing afterwards. So for example, like myself, I was in addiction. And, but I, I wanted to escape it for six years, but I couldn't. So my, my will, I wanted to leave, but I couldn't. And so I was a good candidate to be set free. I was set free. Okay. I, I gave an example earlier. There was a young man that was on heroin. He didn't want to stop. But me and his mother, we exerted our authority. We cast the, the spirit of addiction out of him. He had sound mind. He chose to sin again. But he had the freedom to choose. When you're in addiction, you lose the ability to choose. You cannot say no. You're trapped. You can't stop. Okay, but when we prayed for her son, whose will was, I still want to party, he had a moment of clarity where he had the ability to choose again. He chose to sin again. He got addicted again. We did it again. We did it like three times. And then finally, his will came into alignment. He wanted to be free. So you, we should help somebody even if they don't ask. Because the devil has no right to be destroying them. And then the other thing to realize is it may, not, it, it may not be the person who's talking to you when you talk to them. When Jesus talked to Legion, the man wasn't talking, the Legion was talking. Okay, so the, the, the person's mouth may be saying, no, I don't, I don't want to change. Okay, how do you know that's them talking versus the demon talking? Okay, so the, the moral of the story is if, if the devil's oppressing somebody, if the, if the devil is oppressing somebody just kick the devil out in the name of Jesus and hopefully that person's will is is to be free amen amen, amen.